What is going on guys? So in today's video, I want to go ahead and do a quick review of the Carista app, Carista app. What I want to do is do a few customizations, tweaks to the Sienna. And what I really want to do is code the seatbelt chimes off and I want to open the windows using my key fob. So stay tuned. All right guys, so I have a few uh, notes right here that I'm going to go ahead and try to tackle today on today's video. But uh, just to get started, the Carista app is twofold. Uh, you have to get a hardware, meaning a Bluetooth dongle, and you also have to download their software. And you could get an app store, you could get it in the Play Store from Google. The bad news is the iPhone doesn't work with aftermarket Bluetooth dongles like this one, which I'm going to go ahead and touch up on soon. Now, the Carista app is going to be 90 bucks for a full-time uh, membership versus $9.99 for a subscription-based membership, which is per month, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do the $9.99 for now and also just to test it out. And also, I am not ordering directly from Carista or ECS Tuning, which uh, it's actually sells their Bluetooth dongle. I'm going to use a uh, aftermarket solution, which is from Amazon, and I'm going to link everything in the description down below. Now, going forward with it, I'm going to go ahead and let's see do uh, share with you guys a little bit of the Carista. Uh, they actually, this is straight from verbatim from their uh, blog post. Uh, They're letting us know that they could we could use any type of aftermarket Bluetooth dongles, but it has to be ELM based. And ELM based, I didn't know what it was, but uh, it's basically a communication standard or instruction set. So right here, as you can see from here, and it's developed by ELM Elect Electronics, and whoever used its ELM327 compatible, specifically the 1. Point, version 1.4, then you could go ahead and use aftermarket, which is this one. Now, starting from here, I will move along to installing this. This is a OBD2, uh, OBD2 uh, it's the model number VP11 by VPeak. Now this is 3LM, ELM, sorry, uh, 327 compatible and it's it's cost effective a budget friendly option very tiny and in the future this could come in handy when i need to run diagnostics but we're going to reach under and the obd2 port should be right under here and might get a better look later but it's going to go in blind and kind of feel for it all right and here we go it's on all right, I'll get a better B-roll later. But what I want to do is definitely have your car started. So we're going to start the car. We are going to go ahead and connect to the car. And it does take a little time, but not as long as I expected it to be. Usually it's pretty quick for the most part. It's the initial one that breaks down everything. Um, but right here, since we loaded a couple times, uh, already at 96, 97% complete. So here we are, we are gonna go to dings and warnings. Here we have the headlights on, uh, the chimes, when the headlights are on, if you open the door, I think that's definitely a good reminder. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that on. But everything else is enabled besides, um, well, no, basically everything else is enabled, meaning the seatbelt warning ding for the driver, seatbelt warning for the front, they were enabled, but again, I did everything last night, so it's all disabled. So just as a reference, I'm gonna go ahead and enable it for you guys to check. And I have to go ahead and click agree. All right, and this is how fast it takes to enable and to disable. All right, so again, I'm gonna go ahead and disable it again, because why? Uh, for the most part, I wanna disable it in case I have to do like kind of seatbelt maneuvering or, or something while the car is in low speed motion and then it wakes up the girls or if I have like a heavier book bag right here backpack for the seat and it starts chiming because it senses uh, uh, there might be someone in the front passenger uh, for the most part we all remember to you know put on our seat belts anyway but moving on uh, here's a little bit that you guys could go ahead and just check out especially on the website I'm not going to go through every one of these right but I'm going to go ahead and let you guys check out the windows on sunroof this one is is for the most part it's all of these are enabled besides the first three now it's opening your windows roll down your windows with the unlock i guess pressing unlock 
uh, long pressing unlock or if you have a valet key you could go ahead and insert it in the key um, in the door handle outside and you could turn and hold and all the windows should come down and i think the sunroof should open i haven't tested it myself yet so in a few moments we're going to test it out but the first three options one two and three are all disabled so i enabled those last night but everything else prior uh, after this is basically your one touch power your one touch open for all windows so these are all enabled from factory so i have to do any of those now everything else i kind of kept stock uh again enabled from factory now i'm going to go ahead and touch up on exterior lights exterior lights is right here um how do i put this uh the first one is four flashes this one was from factory three flashes but we're going to go ahead and change it up to six so you guys get my point and from there save and that's five percent complete it takes about six or seven seconds or so maybe less and this should be six flashes on half press All right, there you go, right? But I don't really need six. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put it back to four and save it. Again, it's very snappy. And what I also did from here was um, the turn signal volume. I made it to low. I'm not sure if it makes a difference. Maybe I'll do it again. Here is the, the low volume. And I'm gonna turn it up all the way high and see if you guys notice this. From here, I guess I'll walk through just a little bit, the rest of it, but everything else is kind of very similar. Like you have your auto folding mirrors if you're equipped with it, with the limited, with the platinum, with the 25th anniversary, uh, you could go ahead and have it unfold with the ignition on or when you press the unlock button or you could disable it but uh, there's no point of disabling it I, I think i can't think of a reason why if you pay for the feature um and then your parking sensors i'm not going to really mess with it, it basically gives you a, a tone the pitch and everything to so see if it's a uh, higher or lower uh, i'm okay with it for now all right i'm not going to really touch up on that the steering wheel if you're uh, if you're uh, if your vehicle is equipped with the electronics telescoping, uh, telescoping steering wheel, you could kind of mess around with the features, have it retract all the way and tilt up and down when you exit the vehicle or vice versa, or completely disable it if you don't like that. And overall interior lighting, uh, turn the interior lights when you shut off the engine, that's actually enabled from factory. So you don't have to deal with any of that. Uh, and you want, if you want to turn off that option, you could go ahead and get into this application. Um, and then heater and AC, um, increase blower level. So if you have the defroster on, it's going to go full blown max, right? To go ahead and defrost your windows. Driver's assist is something that I'm not going to really touch up on or not, not touch at all because I want to just keep the safety features, uh, at its default. Um, but you could also tweak it i'm assuming for adaptive cruise control your distance and whatnot uh, but i think you could toggle it via your, your steering wheel so um, i guess it's remember from last distance your, your preference in terms of keeping distance from your the front of the vehicle um, and uh, that's that's it you know it's very slim pickings again all right guys so we're gonna go ahead and lock the door right now with the key fob and then we're going to test everything out after everything's coded so here we have it the car is locked right now we're going to go ahead and press the remote unlock hold it and let's see if it comes down whoa it does work okay so here we have it it does work let's take a look at the sunroof all right, so it opens just a little bit, not fully. And then from here, once you press lock, let's see if it closes. That's not good. So there's no option, and I had a feeling about this. There's no option for you to close the windows by pressing the lock, All right? The Volkswagen did, the Volvo does, not this one. So that's a bummer. I'm going to go ahead and check out the app just in case I'm missing that particular function. 
but there's only three options. Open it via the key and then close it via the turn of the key. But we're gonna go ahead and test out this portion right here. This is the valet key that they gave us, right? And again, there's a key shortage. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in like so, I believe, or maybe it's the other way, right? Like that, right? That's the other way. And then we're gonna close it by turning counterclockwise, I think. And then that works. And then the sunroof closes, right? And then if you turn it clockwise, again. All right. So I don't know why the panic went off, but. Um, but here we have it closes. So that's cool and all, but I wish I could close it via key fob. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and check it out. This is only like the first time I'm trying it out, so all these are initial impressions. But here it is, I'm gonna stop the video for now. All right guys, so in conclusion, what do I think? Well, my initial impression so far is pretty good. I think, is it worth it to go ahead and pay the 40 bucks Carissa Brandon dongle? Uh, I don't think so in, in my opinion. I think it's better if you could find something, especially if you find this one at a particular discount. Um, this one was only 15 bucks from Amazon. So from there, it definitely does work. Uh, again, I'm gonna go ahead and post it in the description down below. Uh, it has to be Bluetooth enabled, Bluetooth capable. You need an Android device, I believe. And also it has to be ELM 327 version 1.4. So this basically works and I tested it. Um, versus going for the Krista branded one, which is 40 bucks plus tax and shipping. Um, as far as my knowledge goes, I think the Krista app is the only one that is able to do the customizations for the Sienna. Um, so that's where I am right now. What I really respect about the company is the fact that they let you download the, uh, the app, their particular application, and from there, search for your aftermarket dongle. And they're really transparent about it in their blog post, right? They're saying that, hey, you don't need to buy it from us. You could go ahead and use any type of dongle that has the ELM 327 1.4, and here it is. And from there, they let you scope out all the tweaks available for your particular car, in our case, the Sienna. And if you wanna go ahead and go forward with the tweaks or the updates, all you have to do is click save. And if you don't have a subscription, you could go ahead and it leads you to the app store and you could go ahead and purchase it. Versus you buying a, a dongle, you purchase the app, or you purchase the app first, you pay for it, and then you'll we'll realize that the dongle doesn't work. So, uh, you know, you can save a little, a, well, a lot of time and hassle by having it function, pair up, make sure it works. And then if you really want the tweaks, then you pay for it. So I think uh, that's respectable for the company. And in the future, not only does it do customizations and, and tweaks and everything, you could go ahead and die, uh, uh, diagnose your car. And on that note, I hope this video was helpful. And uh, until next time, signing out, take care.